Y'all ready for a small form factor build with water? <laughs> This is the Encase M1. This is what we will not be building in today. This is version 6.1 of the Encase M1, which to be sure is a case that I love. There's so many options. There's so many options for custom loop water cooling. You can get a reservoir that's made to mount in the back of the case right here. That was kind of inspiring. So I decided to go with the Cooler Master NR200. Oh, don't worry. This case will be making an appearance for another build. You see, Alder Lake is coming up. Alder Lake is sort of a, a bold move from Intel. Supposedly, you know, again, I don't have this, it's not pre-release, but we're pretty sure that it's got performance cores and efficiency cores. The mix of performance and efficiency cores mean that we can get a better power envelope with pretty good ability to respond to single thread and multi-thread applications, because most of the multi-thread applications out there are doing number crunching, and most of the single thread applications out there are taking advantage of special features in the processor. So some of the threads have special features and some of them don't, hence performance and efficiency. Pretty exciting thinking about that. So for this setup, I've got the Cooler Master NR200. I'm using a Phantom Gaming motherboard with an Intel CPU, the latest and greatest i9 CPU. I haven't decided if I'm gonna go with the 10900K or the 11900K. The 11900K is the obvious choice for the absolute maximum highest end, but really, this is a stand-in until Alder Lake gets here. I don't really think the system's gonna be together all that long. I just wanna prep my parts because building in a small form factor is sort of a pain in the butt. I've also got the EVGA FTW3 3080. This card is a monster card for the 3080. It's a bigger than usual card. It literally will not fit in the Encase M1. It physically will not fit. Now, the Encase M1 will hold a 3090. Unfortunately, my 3090 died owing to GDDR6 overheating. I am working on getting that repaired. Uh, but it's really hard to get GDDR6X, you know? And then it's like, does that match the what's already there? It's gonna have to be a video for another day. But ironically, you can actually put a 3090 on a block easier than a GPU like the 3080 FTW3. That said, EVGA has designed these well. Now, you might be thinking, does that void the warranty or do anything bad? No, as long as you save all your stuff and you put it back together exactly the way that it came in the box, you're totally okay. You can redo the thermal pads, you can redo all the stuff. At least that's what EVGA Jacob says. So if that's wrong, he's wrong. But as long as you don't damage your card, putting the water block on it somehow, knock a component off or something like that, you're fine. If you damage the PCB, and they do check, then you don't, you don't get warranty on that, obviously. So if you incompetently modify your graphics card, they won't give you a mulligans on that. So anyway, small form factor builds. The small form factor builds also are a little bit of a pain in the butt for water cooling because you need a pump that can pump the fluid. You typically need a lot of right angle and 45 degree angle fittings. Radiators are often odd size. And that kind of thing. So for this build, I'm also gonna use an EK Coolstream 240 millimeter radiator that's completely bog standard and a special, a special magical slim radiator. Now this really isn't much of a slim radiator over the EK. It's really, it's really a minuscule difference. There are thinner radiators out there, but this will give me just a few millimeters to clear the block if I also use slim Noctua fans. I could put full size fans there, but you know, slim Noctua fans. So not you a fans for this whole thing. Two radiators, two 240 millimeter radiators, a 3080 and a blast furnace of a CPU. Will it be able to cool this in the system? I don't know, let's get, let's, let's get started putting this together. Remember this? Remember our 92 millimeters worth of clearance for 120 millimeter fan? Well, fortunately I've got a 3D printer. 3D printing things, that's what I'm all about. I accidentally made these too tall. Whoops. <laughs> there we are. If there's enough interest, I'll make this model available. It's not, there's not much to it really. It's just got a, it's basically a fan adapter with a cutout for the motor and room to route your wires. And like I said, I could make it a little shorter, but I'm hoping this will give me a little bit more noise dampening and give me a little bit more flexibility with how I run the tubes because we probably will have to drill a hole in this case. Now initially I had planned to bring in the intake and the exhaust using these right angle fittings plus the barb fitting at the rear of the case. 
but it didn't really work out that way in the end. And I'll show you why a little bit later in the build. Cable routing and management and getting your CPU block, you really gotta think about how you route everything. This is the clear copper EK CPU water block. It's nice, look at that shiny copper. Oh, it's so nice. Then we got the block on the FTW3 from EVGA and I've also got the, uh, the pump part installed, and so you can kind of get a feel for how this build is gonna be. I've already switched out that fitting on the pump so that it's gonna come straight down. I kind of figured my initial plan wasn't gonna work. All right, so we've hit a little snag in our build. We've got the thin radiator for the bottom, it's 240 millimeters. It's pretty much your only option in the bottom of this case. This is the bottom, this is what we're working with. I've also got the Noctua Slim Fans. Now, in order to give the connections to the radiator clearance, your only option pretty much is to mount the fan on top because otherwise it won't clear the graphics card. With the graphics card, the Vector FTW3, we actually had to take off this little end piece. It's the RGB. It kind of gets in the way. So this is not gonna work for us in order to have clearance. I've got the radiator in the front part here mounted. You could put up to three radiators in this case, but you know the, the tube will sort of run down parallel to the graphics card and then the other corner piece comes out. Now for the pump reservoir on the back, instead of going in at a right angle, I think I'm just gonna come down and around. Problem then is this, because the inlet is actually coming in from this side and the outlet's actually coming in from this side, so they're sort of crossed, which is not great because I don't have a lot of room around the radiator. I've also got these 45 degree angle and 90 degree angle connections. For the radiator specifically, when we look at this, you know, it's thinner even than the radiator vendor expected. Yeah, it's a thin radiator, but thin radiators never come with screws, assuming that you're going to have thin fans as well. Here are the screws that it came with. These are uh, number six metric uh, 32 for the threading. They're over an inch long <laughs> for the Imperial units. What I had to do is go to the hardware store. See, the hardware store has lots of number six 32 thread uh, screws. I got a mix of three quarter inch and one inch. You can convert that to metric and that will work a lot better with our thinner fans. You see, if you use screws that are too long, you will actually pierce the radiator. So you gotta be super cognizant of your screws, and if nothing else, use a bunch of washers to prevent the screw from, from going in where you need it. An inch is maybe a little too long, but I'll use a couple washers and it'll be okay. You know, a lot of people like hard line, but I really like soft line for a build like this. So you can see here, instead of coming in at that right angle, I'm just gonna sort of go down and around. So I've got the 45 degree angle and the 90 degree angle both on the GPU. One sort of goes around and the other comes in from the back. This actually worked out really well in the end. Don't forget your zip ties. Also be careful when you're pulling cables, foreshadowing, because uh, you know there's a fitting there on that vertical radiator I didn't quite see and I, uh, I pulled on the tube just a little too hard. Cable management, of course, is a good thing to do. And then checking to make sure that the side panel is gonna have appropriate clearance. There is no extra clearance with this FTW3 GPU. There's, it's, it's literally touching the side of the case. Oh man, it's been a long journey getting here and we're not even remotely done yet. We're just to the point where we gotta fill it with water. It's a little bit of a chicken and egg problem because you don't wanna turn the computer on until there's coolant, but it needs power to run the coolant. So you have to use another power supply or another 12 volt DC source to turn the pump on. And you also don't wanna really run the pump dry. I also haven't leak tested this. And there's enough expensive stuff in here that I probably would recommend the EK leak test kit. You can basically pressurize the system and see if it slowly loses pressure. If it does, then you know you got a leak. Got the fluid in my bottle. You don't want to drip water on your motherboard. That would be bad. All right, that's pretty full. I put almost 250 milliliters in there. Now we gotta run the pump for a little bit to do stuff. And then we ran out of fluid and dropped a power supply. It was fine. It was quick release. Fill bottle is very slow compared to old reliable blue funnel. We're coming up on 500 milliliters. That's a half a liter. If you do manage to get water on something important, Clean it up immediately, don't let it dry. You don't wanna overfill it because you also need to leave room in the reservoir to add the uh, antifungal, anti-growth, antibacterial. You definitely don't wanna run on just distilled water. In the past, you could use a couple of drops of iodide. It's actually kind of, uh-oh.
during this phase of the build, you look like a murder victim. Ah. Yeah, it's it just don't get any water on anything important. So where we ended up with this, ended up using four right angle connectors. I've got one on the output of the pump reservoir combo at the back of the case, two on the 240 millimeter radiator that's mounted here, and one on the graphics card. The graphics card also has a 45 degree angle because I couldn't put them on the top. I probably could have put a slimline 90 and it, it would have been okay. The only thing really weird that I did was the output on this side of the radiator comes up and over and around and down. I still actually would have enough room for an extra slim radiator in the top. I could go up into another radiator out and back down and have a triple radiator, you know, uh, Cooler Master ITX system, which seems absurd until you think about the requirements of Alder Lake. Now they're not official, but I think, you know, with overclocking, we're pushing 250, 300 watts, maybe. It's better to be prepared to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Plus also it'll run quieter. But for me, I think I'm happy with just, you know, 120 millimeter fan or two in the top. And I've got room for that and I don't have to do anything Herculean because the Cooler Master case comes with that. It comes with the mounts for the fan, I mean. The other thing I like about this layout is mostly the fittings and things that might leak are mostly away from important things. Of course, the big exception to that is the CPU block. But the fittings and stuff like that in the front here, if they leak, they should clear the graphics card. And the fittings there on the GPU, if they leak, they'll probably clear the GPU. And having the reservoir and pump outside of the system, those are also, you know, if there's a potential leak, it's probably gonna be in the fittings along the bottom here, the seal around this, or something to do with, you know, pressure or pressure imbalance or something like that. So this would probably be the thing that leaks. And again, that'll leak probably not anything important. So all in all for a small form factor build, I mean, don't get me wrong, these building these is usually a huge pain in the butt. I really don't like to build in small form factor machines, but I have an eye on Alder Lake and I really wanna see what it's like to build with a small form factor machine with Alder Lake. I'm using the Cooler Master 850 watt power supply. For now, I've got that ASRock Phantom Gaming motherboard. Be sure to check that out. I've done the Z490 and the Z590, both full reviews. You know, like I say, I've got the, I've got the Intel's latest and greatest i9 in here right now, but I'm really looking forward to Alder Lake. I kind of want to do a Team Red build too, but the cooling requirements for Team Red are just not as challenging. I do also have a 3080 in here. I could have gone with 3090. The 3090 would have been easier to cool, but the, you know, FTW3 3080 has got a little bit of a bad rep in small form factor builds because the PCB is so large. It is not with one millimeter of clearance on the side. So like if you look at where my my, uh, my stuff is, you have no clearance, virtually none. Well, literally none. It actually rubs the side. It sticks out just a bit, like maybe a half a millimeter. You could use low profile connectors there. You could use a different type of connector there. I actually have one here somewhere um, that connects at a 45 degree angle and it's about five millimeters more narrow than the one that's installed now. But it turned out I didn't need it. I was able to use the one fitting connector that was bundled with the EK water block for the uh, 3080 FTW3. So all in all, not bad. Let's get the system back together and show it off a little more. Now for the bottom fans, because I've got a limited number of four pin power connectors to work with on this motherboard, the FTW3 actually has a four pin fan header right at the front edge of the card. So I used a splitter that came with the Noctua fans and I'm running both of the Noctua fans in the bottom radiator off of the graphics card. That works out pretty well. For the motherboard, I'm running the pump off of the pump header. It's really just a tachometer, it's not actually supplying power. And then the CPU fan header is connected to the two Noctua fans in the front, as well as the top exhaust fan. Now I could have run the other top exhaust fan to the auxiliary fan header on the motherboard. I'm actually gonna do that probably for another 120 millimeter fan here, but I haven't mounted that one yet, so working on it. As you can see, cable management in this case was also surprisingly good considering everything is crammed in here and it's surprisingly breathable. I mean, the distance between the, the Coolstream EK radiator, the 240 millimeter that is uh, in the side and like the RAM and the power supply, there's enough room there for not just one, but two fluid tubes and there's plenty of room for airflow around all that. So this motherboard is gonna get plenty of airflow around the VRM and everything else. Remember the ASRock motherboards for Z590 have extra VRM fans when you're pushing those insane workloads, but I don't think they're really gonna be needed because of all the airflow from everything else. Basically, I've got air coming in the side and the bottom and exhausting out the top. It's sort of a best possible scenario. The tube fittings that I'm using are compression and they secure using zip ties or, or anything else. EK actually does sell cable clamps for those, but 
Um, if you order them from China, they're like a dollar twenty-five each, and they work fine as long as you clamp them. <laughs> That actually bought me a few extra millimeters when I'm talking about mounting the, the video card. Larger fittings may have been problematic there. Fortunately, with the 45 degree bend and the compression fitting with a zip tie, I uh, didn't have any clearance issues, but different kinds of fittings definitely would have had clearance issues there, so be aware of that. Another thing with the GPU is the backplate. You might have noticed that I'm not rocking a backplate. If you're gonna run with the EK backplate, you don't actually need to install the retention spring clip, you just need to use some screws, and then this will thermally connect to your GPU and everything will be great. For the 3080, I don't really need the back plate. This is the FTW3 back plate. You can see it doesn't have any thermal connection at all to the printed circuit board. It's actually a little bit pass through. If I really wanted to do this the, for my preferences, I would actually take the uh, Lexan part, the clear part of the FTW3 block to the machine shop in the basement and mill the entire end of the Lexan off so that the end of the card will breathe. In this particular build, letting the air breathe through the card and into the rest of the system, I think would be beneficial. I could also use this backplate, which breathes if I do that, and still have a backplate installed in the system. I just didn't think it was necessary, so no backplates for me. I'm on the other side of the room and I'm yelling, and I've got the mic right over the pump. Oh boy, this system is quiet. We've been running 3D Mark and other sorts of tests for hours. Now, I've kept the fan profiles fairly conservative. That means my maximum GPU temperature, memory temperature, whatever you want to call it, hits about 85C, but the, the sound, the sound of the machine, is never above a whisper. Now, some people, if you look and you do your research, they'll say that DDC pumps are too loud. And this is sort of a worst case scenario. The pump is outside the machine, it's on the back of the reservoir. It's completely fine. There is nothing to complain about. And it's running at 4100 RPM all the time. It's not even configured to uh, operate responsibly. I can hear more the sound of water than the pump sound. I could turn it down to about you know, 3000, something like that. When the system doesn't really need it, you won't hear it. It's very good, shockingly good. The Noctua fans are doing their job. They're whisper quiet, but they're also moving a lot of air. So overall, it's working pretty good. I did not put Nacho fans in the top of this. I'm using Cooler Master fans. They're pretty good too. I'm really happy with this build in terms of it being quiet and water cooled and utterly ridiculous in basically every way. Shocking. Well, there you have it. In 67 easy steps, <laughs> you two can go from a perfectly good high-end 3080 that had a perfectly reasonable cooler. There was no reason to replace this because this cooler is an awesome, awesome cooler. The system is whisper quiet. The system is actually shockingly quiet for what it is. I mean, yeah, I had to bleed a little bit. I've made a little bit of a mess of things, but uh, the system works well and I am ready for Alder Lake. So I'm really looking forward to revisiting this build when I've got 16 cores to work with. The dual radiator really does the job with that 3080, keeping the temperatures in line very stable, and I was able to overclock that CPU to 5.2 gigahertz all cores all the time without exceeding 75 degrees C. That's impressive. A model, this is level one. This has been a fun build. Show off your small form factor build. Who knows, maybe I'll be able to get Alder Lake into the Encase M1 version 6.1. I contemplated this case, but the Cooler Master case I think is a lot easier to build in. A lot easier shockingly easier. I'm Little This is Level 1, I'm signing out, you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Send me pictures of your small form factor builds, or let me know what you want to build, because I've still got that 92 millimeter uh, pump reservoir combo for something like the Encase M1, so let's see. Let's, let's do a build. Another one. Something. Maybe that will be Team Red. I don't know. We'll see.